Have you ever stood in front of a mirror and wondered, how can there be a copy of myself behind the mirror? Hello. Well, let's take a closer look at the mirror image from Flat Mirrors. Let's take a look from the side. Imagine a man standing in front of a mirror, photons emanating from his toe in every direction. We know that because everyone standing around him in a lit room would be able to see his toe. Um, so before we start bouncing these light rays off the mirror, we need to understand how light reflects. So we'll take a simple mirrored surface seen from the side and, and an incoming light ray, incident light ray. Uh, as it turns out, light reflects so that with respect to a normal, which is nothing more than a perpendicular line to a surface, uh, the normal at that point to the mirror, light will reflect so that the reflected angle is equal to the incident angle as measured from that normal. That is called the law of reflection. So light reflects with symmetry. Okay, so we can go back to our man standing in front of the mirror and how about we pick a couple light rays to reflect according to the law of reflection. Angle in equals angle out. So those three light rays definitely hit the mirror and definitely reflect according to the law of reflection. However, the man standing in front of the mirror cannot see any of those three light rays, those reflected rays, as none of them make it to his eye. So let's see if we can find one maybe that does make it to his eye. That one looks like a good candidate. So to that man, that photon appears to have come from back there. It's a toe over there. He sees it come at that angle. His brain interprets that as a, a toe photon coming from there. Now if you repeat this process for, let's say, his hand, by the law of reflection, that photon appears to make it into its eye out of the many that come from the hand. And that appears to him to come from there. It's a hand over there. Um, let's go to the top of the man, the top of his head, and do a law of reflection bounce there. He'll see a photon, and it'll look like it came from there, in that direction. Does the net effect of this, if you repeated this for his entire body, would be, there appears to be a man standing behind the mirror, as all the light seems to come from there. In fact, there's even symmetry with that image. The man behind the mirror virtual image, the reflection of the man in front of the mirror, um, the distance to him will be equal to the distance uh, to the image. So we call the, those two distances the object distance and the image distance. They're equal. The height is preserved or conserved as well. The image height will be the same as the object height. If you get farther from a mirror, it looks like the person behind the mirror gets smaller. All right, so that's somebody standing in front of a mirror. But what if an object is not in front of a mirror? Is there still an image associated with that? Is how about we have a mirrored surface and oh, an animal? Let's say that's a cat. Yeah. If we bounce some light rays off this mirror, we notice none of them are going to get back to the cat's eye. So the cat may not see an image of herself in this mirror. But what if someone were over here? And that photon made it into their eye. This man certainly sees um, a, a nose photon from the cat as if it came from that direction. Cool. And perhaps an observer over here would see that light ray as if it came from that direction. Mm. And add an observer down at the bottom would see the photons bouncing off that point of the mirror from the cat's nose. So in the net effect mm. is there uh, seems to be a cat's nose on that side of the mirror, according to everyone observing. Now let's repeat this for the tail photons. Let's bounce the photons off, the ones that'll make it to those three observers, track them back according to where it seems they came from, according to them, and the net effect is an image of a cat. Image and object equidistant from the mirror with the same height. So even if something is not in front of a mirror, uh, there is still an image, the same distance from the mirror, at the same height, directly behind. In this case, it makes more sense to refer to the plane of the mirror rather than the mirror itself. Obviously, the observer's location matters too. Goodbye.